Before we get into this video, I just wanted to quickly announce that I now partnered up with OneFootball. And if you guys are interested in an app that covers all of your football needs, this is the one. It will give you the live scores when teams, your favorite teams, are playing teams like Liverpool playing in the Champions League. And if you want to be up to date and you can't watch it yourself, this is the app for you. If you want news to be on your phone directly, you can go ahead and get this app as well. It will tell you about all the new transfers and so on when the transfer window is around. Get one football link in the description down below. Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome. Yes, boys, this is the new series, the new Road to Glory. Notts County has been replaced. It is going to be Kaiserslautern, boys. This is a side that formerly actually won the Bundesliga title last time in 1998 when I was six years old. They have won the title, but now it is time to take them through to the top of the Bundesliga and also, of course, to the top of European football. Today, this is what we do. We start off a new career mode and if you guys are hyped about this new journey, Please make sure to hit that like button. Let's get this video to 4,000 likes. That would be absolutely amazing, guys. It is the beginning of a new series, and that would be very, very much appreciated. I am extremely hyped, and it is time for us to begin straight away with the transfer budget. As you can see, we have 3 million in the bank right now. I will be adjusting the budget a little bit um, for the wages and that means our budget will go down to 2.3 million in the transfer budget and then around 13 to 15k in the wage budget. That is how we start off. But obviously, we have to take a closer look into the starting lineup of Kaiserslautern. Now, this team's best player is Spalvis. As you can see, this man is 70 rated. He has decent finishing stats on him, a good amount of shot power. And of course, he will be our main player at the beginning of this career mode. He's from Lithuania and he is six foot two tall and he's left footed, which I really, really like about him. And then we have Tila, who is currently playing alongside him. This is going to be the partnership that we have. I'm looking forward to see how these two can partner up with each other. Now, he is injury prone. And I think Spalvis is injury prone as well. We will have Biada at the camp position because despite being a striker, he can actually play in that camp position. He has some decent stats, good amount of agility on him for a 64 rated player. And again, as you guys have seen these players in the background, I can only tell you this much. It is quite interesting. Always starting off with a new team like this, you never know what you're going to get. Like I'm looking at these players and I have absolutely no idea what these guys are going to do, right? But one or two seasons into this career mode, these guys will be absolutely amazing. Like, not all of them, obviously, but some of these guys that we have in this team are going to be legends at some point. Hopefully, that is what I'm dreaming of. But um, yeah, as we go on, you can see that our team just looks very, very good, in my opinion, for third Bundesliga. And I think we should be doing kind of all right. Obviously, the first season, the target is going to be to get promoted into the second Bundesliga. And here's the thing. A lot of people wanted me to go back into England and do yet another Road to Glory over there. I've seen a lot of people saying like teams like Portsmouth and stuff. I just personally wanted to do something new, guys. And I originally actually wanted to do an 1860 Munich career mode, but I realized that that was something that was already being posted by a fellow colleague on YouTube. So I decided to switch it up and take on Kaiserslautern. And you know what? I think that's the right decision because we have had some issues with um, like doing the same career mode multiple amount of times. So this time around, we're obviously going for a new team and it is going to be Kaiserslautern. And I'm really, really looking forward to see how this team will turn out to be. This is our goalkeeper, Grill. Um, he is going to be taking care of the barbecues and everything. Obviously, that's a joke and a really bad one. Uh, we're going to move on though. Uh, we're going like, to take a look into the bench. And on the bench, we do have some decent players. This Hooth guy, 64 rated. Keep an eye out on him. Esmel as well. He does look quite nice. And then we have a dick on the bench. <laughs> yes, boys. In the 1860 Munich career mode, there was Leon Dick. And now we have Fabian Dick in this career mode. And uh, obviously, the main focus of this career mode is going to be the Youth Academy. And we are going to pick up Urs Luthi. And he is going to be the man that hopefully brings us in some incredible, incredible talents. Four-star experience, four-star judgment, 
good enough for the beginning of this career mode. I couldn't afford anything better. And first of all, we're going to send him to Argentina. Normally, I always tend to send my scouts over to Brazil because that is a reliable space to send the scouts to. You tend to always get some really, really good players out of that one. As you guys know, not County career mode. We have picked ourselves up a uh, Breno Fernandes, who then turned out to be the best player in that career mode by a country mile. I mean, not really the best player, but like the most fun and one of the most impactful players in that career mode. And that is what I'm looking forward to find here as well. And you can see these other players that I'm going to focus the training on. Huth, Esmel, and Grill, and Jonic right now are my focus in this team. We do have kind of like 24, 25 year old players in this club and a lot of also younger players, which I really, really do like. So that means a lot of these players will be growing as we go on. And in the preseason tournament, as you can tell, the first match we have won against Gazalek. It is a one nil victory in that position. And then we go on against Laberi. That is a loss, a two nil loss, which I'm not happy about at all. And then we have lost in the knockout stages, the semi-final right there of this preseason tournament. So I'm really looking forward to see what our team can achieve in the second Bundesliga, uh, in the third Bundesliga actually. And I really love the fact that we now have the third Bundesliga in FIFA. I think that's a great thing. I think that's going to help us out to do a lot more Road to Glories in the future in the Bundesliga. Maybe not in FIFA 19, but definitely in FIFA 20 or anything like that. That'd be great. And right here, I wanted to bring in a great player. Muslija was someone that I wanted to bring in from Hanover. And sadly, he has just recently moved over to this team and they really didn't want to let him go. So I would have to pay his release clause, but that was 2.8 million. It was just too much. And I decided, you know what, since I'm looking for technically gifted players in the youth academy, let's look for defenders and midfielders, defensive midfielders. And McCrory, he looks very good. Like I'm talking legendary type of good. This is someone that I have found who just looks like an underrated, hidden gem, unbelievable player. And I really wanted him to join into our club. So straight away, we go in with a transfer offer. Knowing that this guy is worth quite a lot, I wanted to go for a 2 million transfer offer for him. First of all, I thought, let's put an add-on clause, uh, a sell-on clause into that one. But I decided to go against it. And they have accepted 2 million straight away, was accepted by our opponents in this transfer deal and I really wanted this guy in my team. I truly believe this can be an absolute icon in this career mode. I don't want to say too much, but if you see his stats in just a second, boys, you're going to be very happy. And yes, with that, I have revealed the whole transfer deal will go through. He will join into our team. He's only 20 years old, a CDM who is above six foot tall. So that is going to be great. And at first I was thinking, by the way, he really wanted to only sign for one year. Why? Come on, man. Believe in me. Believe in this project. Go ahead and sign along a contract. And in the end, it did turn out to be a two-year contract, which I'm still not happy about. But uh, next season, we can go ahead and extend these contracts, obviously. But um, the formation that I want to play in right now is the 4-1-2-1-2 wide, which we are currently also using in the Crystal Palace career mode. It is a formation that I'm very, very familiar with at the moment, and I really wanted to go back into it. And here we go. McCrory is going to join our team and he is 68 rated now look at these stats 80 aggression 80 acceleration um 71 jumping 82 sprint speed 79 stamina 78 strength those are some ridiculous physical stats and then we move on into the skill attributes which are not too great yes it's fine though it's fine he's de decent at defending and then on top of it he can play in multiple positions a complete all-rounder high defensive work rates this is going to be a great player for us a right footer as well so and that is something that i personally like a lot i do tend to play much better with right footed players so um that was something that i was really happy about to see so he is also by the way um the owner of the leadership trait so looks like we do have a potential future captain right there get through the here this is the next player that I wanted to sign. I was looking for yet another defender and I was looking for someone who can play center back and also right back. And he is someone that has a release clause as well. 1.6 million was his release clause, but I decided to go into the negotiations. I was kind of hoping that we could bring this guy in 
Um, as always, I do love to bring in Dutch players. In the Nost County career mode, we did have Van Leuven, who was absolutely incredible. He was our captain for a very, very long time. And now he's looking to bring in yet another Dutchman. He is 18 years old, plays for Feyenoord. Would be a great signing because he is kind of a defensive all-rounder. And it does seem to work out in the first steps right here. We do get our transfer offer through. And now we are looking to go ahead and negotiate the contract with Getrodia, who can play center back and right back, if I haven't mentioned already. He is someone that will help us out a lot because in the defense, we do have a bunch of old players. We have a center back who is over the age of 30, I believe. And we do have a left back who is around 26 years old. We have a right back who is also not the youngest. So this guy will be able to replace whoever is just not good enough. That is the plan behind this one. And yet again, another one that comes in with saying, hey, I only want to sign a one-year contract, which kind of disappointed me. So I wasn't really too happy with that one. But again, I offer a two-year contract and my man will hopefully accept this. The release clause is going to be disregarded in this case and we're going to move on into the wages. The wages obviously um, are not that big at the moment. The club doesn't have that much money so we have to be a little bit careful with the wages. We're offering 5k. I was like hmm this might not work out but luckily he did accept boys. Gertrudia is going to be the second signing of this season. You probably pronounce him like Gertrudia or something like that because uh, the Dutch people don't really pronounce G as a G. They pronounce it like a G. So uh, that might be the right way to pronounce his name. So Schad is going to come off the starting lineup. Gertrudia is going to join in and he is a 64 rated player as well. But look at these stats. 77 acceleration, 82 jumping, 76 sprint speed, a decent amount of stamina, good amount of strength. I was really looking forward to see this guy play for our team. Decent slide and stand tackle on top of it. So all good. Three star weak foot. If he isn't good enough for the right hand side, Shad will come back into the starting lineup and then we will move him into the centre back position to replace the 66 rated centre back who is around 30 two years old so that is what we are going to be doing and uh the first match of the season has the coincidence it is against 1860 munich boys we are going in and we're going to be playing against the team that i originally wanted to do the career mode on and this will show us was it the right choice to go with Kaiserslautern? And once again, I want to um, tell you guys something about Kaiserslautern. Kaiserslautern actually was a very good team for quite a while. It is a team that has an amazing stadium. Um, it is called the Betzenberg. Back in the day when I was um, quite young, I do remember Kaiserslautern to be one of the better teams in the Bundesliga. And they have kind of fallen off. And it is kind of sad. If anyone remembers um, Altintop, the Turkish uh, national team player who also uh, scored some incredible goals in the past. I don't know which Altintop it is though. Was it the one that played for Real and Bayern? Or is it his brother? One of those two did play for Kaiserslautern for quite some time, I believe. And he did really well over there. So I was paying a lot of attention to that team. But you can see, we do go down. It is 1860 Munich. It is 1-0 for them. And I wasn't happy with that. I was really trying my absolute best. But of course, I was just getting used to this team. But then a great pass from Spalvis into our right midfielder. And we do get it into the back of the net. And of course, I'm going to run around and I'm going to shush 1860 Munich. We got to do it. We got to do it. And there we go, sliding right in front of them. Great job right there. That is 1-1. And our right mid does score the first goal for our career mode. And we don't stop right there. We keep pushing. We bring it back into the middle. And here he is. That is Spalvis. Yes. As I'm recording this, I'm also watching the Liverpool game. Firmino has scored. Let's go. Liverpool 1-0 up against Tottenham. But that is kind of off topic, I know. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to be very happy as a Liverpool fan. That is great. I just could I have to record this video right now. But I also have to be completely honest with you. I watch every single Liverpool game. So if I am watching a Liverpool game while I'm recording, so be it. But right here, boys, it is 2-1 right now. A massive chance has been wasted by Kaiserslautern right there, which I really wasn't too happy about. I thought I took the shot. I, I thought it didn't quite register. So that was a bit unfortunate, but we push on. We push on and it is 1860 Munich. They come back again, boys. It is 2-1. Two, and that is not the result I wanted to see. I was quite unhappy with that one. 
And at that point, I decided to make some changes. Hoof is going to come in. He actually does have some great stats on him. And Esmel is going to come in down that right-hand side. Quite a talented player, so we will have him come into the games quite often. 75th minute. We bring it into Spavis. Spavis over to... It is pick, pick, through, back into the middle, and it is again Spalvis with the strike. It is 3-2. He is running around, shushing, and then asking, do you have anything to say, 1860? This was the right team to do the career mode with, it seems. We are going in and we are scoring three goals in the first match, and so far, I can only tell a few things about this team. Spalvis is a great finisher. But you have to get it onto his left foot. His right foot isn't good enough. Then again, though, moving on to the wings, we do have Pick, who is actually a four-star skiller. So he is quite good as we do win this game, by the way. 3-2, first three points of the season. Absolutely amazing. And we move on, though, from that. Spalvis is clearly the man of the match in this case. But moving on from Spalvis and also from Pick, I have to say McCrory was incredible. In that CDM spot, boys, he was so good. Like, I don't want to sound like, oh, he's, he's so good, he's this and that. But you guys know how much I love Sander Berge in my Crystal Palace career mode. I truly believe this McCrory guy would absolutely destroy Sander Berger if he was on the same rating. This McCrory guy is special and he's going to stick with us for a very, very long time. But we do get our first scout report from Argentina and you can see there's not a lot to look at really. We do get a couple of players with potential up to like 80 and stuff, but who the hell cares? We need some superstars and I do remember in the Notts County career mode, if I'm not mistaken, we did have a lot of great talents within the first one or two months. So that was a bit worrying. I was thinking, oh, maybe four star, four star for the scout is not enough. Maybe it needs to be even more than that. So we do move on, though. After the Munich game, we actually start losing games, which I wasn't really happy about. And then we won against Halle. So it is six points so far for our team Kaiserslautern. We are also in the eighth position, which is very nice to see, in my opinion. Obviously, as I said, it is a big goal of mine to go ahead and win the promotion or get the promotion, however you say it. I just want that promotion into the second Bundesliga. I want to push Kaiserslautern as high, as fast as possible. But a pick gets an offer right here. We will not accept that. But about Gottwald, we can actually negotiate because he's a player that at the moment is not looking like he's going to take over a position in the team. He is 20 years old, so he could have some sort of potential on him. Him, but we are going to be moving on from him I think we're going to offer a 600k in term in return to the offer of um, our opponents right here in this deal and they are going to accept it so Gottwald is going to leave the team now it might be a big mistake because I honestly have no idea how much potential he has but in general that was something that I felt like I had to do because I wanted more than just one scout I think we need one more scout to be able to send them out and find multiple talents within the month. That was something that I really wanted to do. So Gottwald has been sold and we keep getting offers for pick. A lot of teams seem to be very interested in him. Now, second month of the scouting in Argentina, 89 potential. That's the highest we have seen so far. And finally, boys, Joaquin Quiroga. He has 73 to 94 potential. So we had to go for it. We had to sign him up. He's only 15 years old. He doesn't really have high value. So that means he might not be that high rated. But we're going we're gonna to try anyways. We're going to see how this guy plays. I am looking for that one standout player. I am personally looking for that insane talent that's going to just take over this series. And that those types of players are going to be coming through our youth academy. We're not going to buy them. The attacking players are some of the most important players in these types of career modes. So right here we have a scout, four star experience, three star judgment. So I thought to myself, you know what? We're going to go for it. We're going to go for it. We're going to spend 900k on that scout and we're going to send him over 
to France, I believe. For three months, we're going to be looking for talents over there. And I really hope we can find ourselves something nice. I was looking for physically strong because I believe that is for defenders. If I am doing things wrong with the Youth Academy, you guys, as always, will be correcting me in the comments down below. So I'll be looking forward to seeing your feedback according to that. If it is, I think defensive minded is like CDMs and stuff. And you guys told me last time around that I should switch it back to something like that so um there we go at the moment though kaiserslautern in a terrible spot boys we have dropped out of the top eight and the team is performing really really bad like they are performing so bad i didn't even i couldn't even imagine playing this bad with a team like this in the third bundesliga i thought that we would be doing a lot better but the scout that we have sent to germany has actually found some good talents. We have a bunch of players with potential above 90. Now, obviously, the judgment isn't perfect with these scouts, so it could go down, it could go up. Anything is possible in that case. So we will see what happens with these players. We keep signing them into the Youth Academy, just hoping that some of them will turn out to be sick. But Kiroga, as you can see right here, he has already dropped in his potential to max 89. And obviously... 89 isn't really the most amazing potential for us we want something better in that case we really want someone who has 92 to 94 potential that's the target that is what we are going for and since we were losing all of these games and the calendar simulations i realized okay we need to switch to a formation where every player that is in that team actually plays exactly that position because then if the game simulates in the calendar most of the time it tends to select the players that i actually selected myself so that is what we are doing we are changing back to a 4-2-3-1 it seems like mccrory wasn't just doing well enough by himself in that cdm position so we had to help him out a little bit with feshna who is actually a quite talented player as well but we keep on losing we keep on losing and that isn't good enough. We do win though, finally, and then we lose again. So that was the whole story. We, loon, we lose, we win. We lose, we win. But more than often, we just lose. And because of that, boys, we are in the 19th position. In 13 games, we have lost eight of them. And that is not okay. I didn't expect anything like that. And I was very disappointed to see that happen. So right here, Eric Maya, who has up to 92 potential. He's someone that we're going to look at for the future. We have Justus Falke right here, who has 69 to 94 potential. But as you can see, their values are just not really high. All of them below 100k, which tells you these players actually only have great potential, but nothing more than that. So I was looking for those players who have value above 100k, maybe even above 200k, which would be amazing. And again, the first scout that we have sent away to Argentina, he is back. And this time around, I just wanted to go back to good old Brazil to look for technically gifted players. That is what we are going for. I want it to bring some beasts into the team. So Argentina didn't do it for us. We're gonna send him to Brazil and that is me hoping that we can find that special player. But right here against Energi Cottbus, we have won our game 2-0, really happy about that. Two games back to back we have won and then we have lost against Rostock and then we drew against Vien. But you can tell not as many losses since we did switch to the 4-2-3-1 formation, which is something that I have seen quite often. When I change my formations in these types of career modes, it tends to do a lot better. And we have one against Unterhaching as well, which is a great result. The team is turning the season around at the moment, but there is still a lot of work to do. So Erik Maia is still up to 90 potential, but we have found Justus Falke, who now has 75 to 94 potential, which I really, really like. But you can see, a lot of talents that we find through the scouting system are just not good enough. But Hans Wagner might be one of those that actually is amazing. He has 160k in his value, which tells us he is going to be a big one. He is going to be a great talent and hopefully he can play for us soon enough. We go on though and we keep looking through these talents and we decide, you know what? These two, they're not good enough. They have a value of 70k. I think their uh, potential is just going to keep on dropping down to a point where 
It just isn't worth it for us to spend our time on these players. I just want the big ones. So we are going ahead and doing this. We are sending those two away and we will never see them again. Now in the league, obviously we have to jump into a game ourselves and it will be happening in just a little bit. And uh, that game that we play is going to be very important to us. Now we're going to take a look at how we played um, in this month. We have one against Unterhaching and now we'll be up in a game for ourselves and we have one against Würzburg, but now it is time for us to play against Mepin. Mepin is currently quite low in the league table. We are in that 14th position. Actually, no, Mepin is in the 7th position. This is a big game, boys. We got to step it up right here against them. I kind of uh, mistaken them to be a little bit lower in the league table, but they are above us. They are actually in the 7th while we are sitting in the 14th. So they are technically twice as good as we are. We are going to be playing at their home ground and as you can see it is a little bit snowy so the quality won't be perfect but Spalvis has scored eight goals this season. After scoring when we played our first game this man is looking like a very good player by himself as well. He doesn't need me to control him for him to go ahead and score these goals so we switch to the 4-2-3-1 now and I'm hoping we can get a better defensive performance but straight away, these are opponents with the first attack. And that is something I did not enjoy seeing. But then it was time for us to get the ball. Spalvis showing a lot of strength, bringing it into the hemline. Hemline is looking for that pass through. It is going to be Feshna. One on one with the goalkeeper. Feshna, just not good enough. He is a CDM. So that was kind of half expected in that position. But it is now Mepin on the attack. Some great passing play. And a good goal after all. It is 1-0 for our opponents. Something that I didn't like seeing. And we went down after 14 minutes very early into the game. I thought we played a little bit better than our opponents so far. But yeah, our goalkeeper just couldn't reach it. Um, he just couldn't do it for us. And we had to step it up. We are pushing on now ourselves. McCrory now with the passes. We get into Spalvis. And Spalvis will put into the back of the net. Look at that goal. That is... Something that just shouldn't have happened. Let's be honest to each other. That goal should never go in because it is basically a 360 shot. It doesn't make sense. So then our opponents were like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Let's make it fair again. Let's score another one. It is 2-1 as we go into the second half. And that is obviously not a great result for us. I'm not happy with that at all and we have to push on yet again to get back into this game so we do do that but sadly our defensive work is just terrible our defenders both of our center backs are definitely players that we're going to replace in the future these two are not good enough um, i feel like they're turning like absolute trucks and that is something that we have to change we have to bring in some talented players with pace talented players with agility and then now though Huth came in as a substitute and we bring it over to Spalvis and he's gonna smack it into the top right corner and it is 3-2 yet another goal for our main striker this is his ninth goal of the season very very nice to see and now we're going to attack again. It is the 89th minute as we go into the 90th though. Spalvis with the pass to Hoof. Hoof back into Spalvis. And he puts it into the back of the net, boys. It is 3-3. Yet another goal for our beloved striker. Very nicely done. Number 33 puts it into the back of the net and makes the fans very happy. I thought I was about to lose this game. But he has stepped it up and he got it done for us. This man has the potential to become a hero. Right here, pick on the attack again. Back into Spalvis. He is looking for the pass. And in the last split second, there is a tackle. And the ref blows the whistle. A great game. A decent enough result for us. Guder has scored three goals. He has done really well for his team. Five attempts, three goals. That is pretty impressive if you ask me. Now, obviously, we have a scout report. Kiroga, 53 rated, 80 to 88 potential. Not the best, but not the worst. Justus Falke, 73 to 91. And then we have this man right here, Hans Wagner, 70 to 90. I genuinely thought he would have a little bit more potential. But hey, that's fine. Hopefully, he stays pretty high. And hopefully we can continue on 
to chase these talents in these youth scout reports and here we have another one Felipe Silvera 70 to 94 potential but only worth 70k in his value which tells us he actually doesn't have up to 94 potential we need these players man and it's looking like after half a season we just can't find them and that is just not good i was spending so much money and so much time on trying to get these players into the team and it just wouldn't work out for us we are quite unlucky and despite having sent my scout to france already i have just sent him there again which actually actually no hold on i didn't send him to france last time i sent him to germany of course now i'm sending him to France, boys, and we are looking for talents over there. We do lose in the DFB Pokal, which kind of sucks, but then again, I want to focus on the league. And then we do win against 1860 again, which I was very happy about. And we do move in into the January transfer window. Now, this is the stage where we have to do a big, big business. We have 25 points. We are in the 12th position. We are nine points behind promotion and that is what we need to try and achieve that is what we want to do and obviously i'm going to try my absolute best but it's going to be an incredibly tough task to be able to pull off a promotion within the first season but this is what i love i love to go for these types of challenges and you can see Spalvis loves it as well. 16 matches. My man has scored 11 goals. He is one of the most prolific strikers in the third league right now. And hopefully he can continue on his performance in the second half of the season. As you guys know, these uh, videos, one episode means half a season. It will be going that way throughout this entire career mode. I believe we had around 14 episodes with Notts County, which means that is around seven seasons. So we had a lot of fun with the Notts County career mode. And we're going to try and replicate that with this one. The question is... Can we get to where we were with Notts County after seven seasons with um, uh, Kaiserslautern as well? That will be a big task. I I don't know. I hope. I hope we can because the road is a little bit shorter. We only have to get promoted twice and then we will be in the highest tier football of this country. But obviously, it will still remain a very, very hard task to take over the Champions League and everything like that. So the individual performances, you can clearly see that just no one steps up to the level of Spalvis. He is definitely the main man in our team at the moment. The question is, can anyone else step up and help him out in the future? You can see a lot of goals have been scored by a lot of players. They are sharing it in between each other, but it just doesn't look consistent enough. We need more top performers in our team. Hoot, I believe, has around seven assists him or pick one of those two has seven assists which is nice to see but we have absolutely no money left after sending our scouts out over and over again signing two of them we have spent around three million on both of these scouts and so far we don't really have anything to show for that money hopefully next part of this season we will be able to find those players that will carry us to the champions league trophy at some point but hood is currently the man who is growing the most he is on a plus four currently on the bench yes but he's going to take his position in the starting lineup soon enough i believe but let me know guys which insane young players that are very very low rated but amazing in game can i buy i am looking for cheap cheap players i think i'll be able to sell one or two players in this january transfer window and put together around maybe 1 million so with that 1 million let me know who can i buy i want to improve this team i am looking for some sick talents let me know in the comments down below i hope you guys enjoyed the first episode of the kaisers lautan career mode and let's hope liverpool win this game take care boys have a good one love you peace